Today I'm going to show you how to make grass. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Flurn is the best family online to help you guys get better at Photoshop and photography. Today is contest day. Every Monday we do contest and uh, I'm happy to announce the winner from last week's contest is Carrie. We're going to be working on her image today and uh, congratulations Carrie. Just send us an email and we'll send you your free Flurn Pro tutorial. We also have a new contest today which I'm going to announce later in the episode and you guys can win free pro tutorials as well. So we're going to work on this image but before we do I'm going to tell you Two seconds about Photo Plus. We just got back from New York. Um, thank God, because there's a hurricane coming and it's crazy. I just barely, barely got out of New York and um, I really hope it's okay for everyone there because we met a lot of amazing people. Wonder, wonderful things, wonder, wonderful things happened in New York and I can't wait to tell you guys about them. We're devoting an entire episode on Wednesday. So last episode, last Wednesday, we told you about like our intentions and what we hope to get out of Photo Plus. This Wednesday, we're going to tell you about what we actually did and how that's going to affect you guys. So uh, stay tuned for that. So let's get to... <laughs> let's... <laughs> You know what, I, I should put that as a blooper, but I'm just going to leave it in, so enjoy that. Let's get into our episode. What do you think? All right, so this is Carrie's image, and uh, it's awesome. We talked last week about scale, and this is a really, really cool image. Um, I'm guessing this is Carrie here, and she's um, underneath a giant stalk of broccoli, which I always thought looked like big trees anyway. So this is like kind of the perfect thing, um, because it, it looks like a big tree. And we even have asparagus here in the back, and it, it's such a cool image. It's kind of understated. I mean, if you... If you get back far enough from the image, it doesn't even look like it's a composite, right? It just looks like, you know, oh, she's leaning against a tree. It, only when you look at it a little closer do you realize all those nice little details. And uh, personally, I really appreciate that. I think it's really cool and it's, it's not easy to do that. Uh, so a lot of clever things going on here. Now, what we're going to do help out is um, the only thing that really needs a bit of work here is our, uh, our tree line or our asparagus line. Um, you'll see what we've got going on. The asparagus basically goes down here into black in this area there and then um, we have an area where it just, let's just grab, grab a nice color there, um, we have an area where it just kind of gets quite a bit lighter. You can see it goes black and then quite a bit lighter. Now this would be okay if the light were coming you know from the side, let's just grab a color like this, if the light were coming you know in from the side and this was a shadow line or something like that. But we know the image is not. Uh, it's backlit. You can see the light, you know, coming from the back of her hair. You can see the shadows, you know, kind of coming down in this way. So the shadows would be coming out like this. So what we have here is, um, and this is one of the hardest things to do in Photoshop and with compositing, is get shadows right when you guys are doing a composite. So this is not a problem that's unique to this image. Um, and it's honestly, it's going to be incredibly hard for me to fix this. And I spent a while trying to figure it out and we came up with a grass brush, which is going to help out a lot. Um, but you should have the shadows of the trees kind of coming here. So not only should we have, you can see like the object here and the shadow, the object and the shadow, because the object is in shadow, they're about the same lightness. You don't have the object is quite a bit lighter and then the shadow is very much darker. They're about the same lightness because they're actually both in shadow. Um, so we want to do the same thing with our grass here. Um, or asparagus back there. You wouldn't have asparagus that's very dark and then, you know, follow just by like a very light ground. So you have two choices. Um, you can lighten up your asparagus to match this or you can darken up your ground. And I'm going to kind of go right in between because the asparagus is already relatively dark and um, this is how the image uh, was presented to us. So first thing I want to do is, you know, I'm just going to grab a brush tool. This is a little bit out of focus, so it's okay to do this. Um, if everything was super in focus, I probably wouldn't do this, but we're going to grab a brush tool and grab this nice green color here and um, just paint really, really softly. I mean, I'm painting, you know, at a flow of 10% here and I'm just lightening things up. Now, if you want to make sure you are lightening and not darkening anything, change your layer blend mode to lighten and it's going to make sure that you can see you're not going to darken anything. So it's going to be a little bit less muddy than you can see normal. See the muddiness there in the highlights. So let's change that back to lighten. There we go. You, you have your highlights intact. So we're lightening that up just a little bit and that's going to help us with our transition a little bit more because we, we need to kind of take care of this. Um, now to do this, what we're going to do is create a grass brush and I'm going to give you guys this grass, grass brush. So um, you don't even have to do anything. You just watch me do it and then download the brush. So we have our width of 200 and our height of 200 uh, on a new document. I'm going to hit OK and then we're going to create one single piece of grass. So to do that, grab your marquee tool. We'll make a selection right here in the middle 
okay? And on a new layer, I'm gonna fill that with uh, black, okay? Now we're gonna grab our marquee tool again, and I'm gonna move this right over here, hit enter, and then hit the delete key. There we go. So we made a selection and then just deleted out part of the selection. Now I'm gonna delete out the bottom part of the selection too, and what we've got is something that looks kind of like a blade of grass. I'm gonna use my move tool and just kind of warp that around so now it looks a little bit more like a blade of grass. And this is great, this is the start of a good brush, you just need one blade of grass. So we're gonna to go to edit, down here to define brush preset, and we're gonna call this grass one. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we need to go back to this other image and see what our grass brush gives us. So go to your brush tool, uh, just right click, or you can go to window down here to brush, either one you wanna do, and you can go to your brush presets, which are, your grass is gonna be right over there, brush tip shape, there's your grass down there. That's right there. The best way to do it is to right click because these are really confusing. So right click and there at the very end will be your piece of grass. There we go. Now, with your piece of grass, we need to size it a little bit better. It's not sized very well. So you can see what's happening right now, let's just paint it 100%, is as I drag my brush, it just looks like that. That's not helpful at all. So go to window and down here to brush and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on a couple of these dynamics that are gonna make the brush useful to us. So we're painting around like this. That's you know not incredibly useful. Let me go to turn on our shape dynamics. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn on our size jitter. So we're jittering all the way up. This is gonna make some of these pieces smaller, some of them larger. We'll bring our minimum diameter down so we actually get some really small pieces. Then we'll turn on our angle jitter and you can see all the little previews happening right there, uh, You know what happens. Now I'm gonna flip X and Y so we get some curving this way and some curving that way. We don't wanna flip the Y jitter because I don't want some upside down. So left and right, yes, but not upside down, right side up. Scattering we're gonna turn on, this is just gonna kinda of scatter some of our brush pieces right around there. All right, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna be ready to start painting with our new grass brush. So let's just make that quite a bit smaller. Now the trick with this grass, grass brush is going to be, we'll just close that for now, we'll probably get back to it. It's going to be sampling your colors like here in your shadows and there we go, painting in your shadows first. Now you're probably going to be tempted to do this quickly. Um, keep in mind you're, you're painting like, you know, you're like Bob Ross here. <laughs> you're really actually just painting things. So don't go, don't go too fast because it's, you know, it's not the thing you wanna rush. So we're painting our brush uh, with our grass brush. Let's just go to window brush. I wanna go back and just bring our scattering up a little bit more. There we go. Now I wanna paint with the darker areas first. We're just gonna paint these shadows in. There we go. And we'll paint with the dark areas first and then I'm gonna come back over top and paint with the light areas. Now, keep in mind, this is not gonna be perfect, guys, because, you know, I don't have a ton of time to do it, and um, this is very hard to do, also. Um, but we will have quite a bit more um, luck than if we were to just grab, like, a, you know, or a standard brush and just try painting. So I'm grabbing, grabbing some colors and just trying to blend this, all this in. Okay, now we have our darker areas, and that's totally okay. What we wanna do is grab some of our lighter areas and start painting over the darker areas as well because you do tend to have you know, light, area, light pieces of grass that show through the dark areas. So it's not just dark grass, you, have, you can see it here. You, know, you have a light piece of grass, kind of like, let's just zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You have a light piece of grass that shines up through the darkness. And the same thing with the dark, if this were, it's a little out of focus, but you'd have a piece of dark grass that goes up through the lightness. So that's basically what we are, um, what we are imitating there. And the more time you spend on this, like pretty much everything else in life, the better it's going to be. So we're spending some time on it to get it decent, and um, you could spend more or less time on it. Now, the grass, because we, you know, we started from a very nice sharp image, is going to be a little bit too in focus. It's a little bit too sharp, so it's going to need some, some blurring and things like that. But we can see, it, you know, it definitely has that nice texture and you can even bring, you know, some of your highlight grass on in there to kind of show like, you know, where it peeks out through the light. You know, you can imagine a little bit of grass maybe in the light spots as well, kind of coming through there. So we have a lot more variation than if we just grabbed a color. 
And again, I'm holding alt or option to just sample my grass over and over again. And um, that's helping us with our, with our colors. Very nice. So we can see we just went from that to that with a grass brush and it really didn't take too long. Now, one thing I do want to do, let's go ahead and save this brush, right click, and I'm gonna to go to new brush preset and I'm gonna to go to Flurn Grass. There we go. And then you guys will be able to download that. So we're, we've created our, glass, our grass. Now what I'm gonna do is grab a curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna pull this, you can see how our shadows here, um, are, they're not very light, you know, but they're not very dark and they have a little bit of blue information in them. So I'm gonna use my curves, and, curves adjustment layer to just like pull a little bit of blue and right now it's affecting our entire image, right? But what I wanna do is just uh, hit Command I on this to invert the layer mask, then choose a regular brush and just paint over your shadows with this like blue color that's kind of like lowered the contrast a little bit. And that's gonna help your shadows um, of the background. You can see how like in color they just match a little bit better than, bring that up just a little bit more. Um, they match a little bit better. They're not as, you know, deep green. They match, they look a little more blue. Okay, and the last thing to kind of finish it off, uh, we're just gonna add a blur to it. You could add, you know, all kinds of different blurs. Let's just duplicate that just in case I don't like the blur. Um, I think we're just gonna go with a Gaussian blur on this to keep the episode relatively simple. Um, there we go, that looks pretty good. You know what? We don't need to go simple. We're already going complex. Let's make a new layer. I'm gonna even calculate into uh, our blur, we're gonna calculate into it depth of field. So I'm gonna make a selection here, kind of paint there, command click on that to make that selection, make that layer a selection. And then here I can add a little bit more blur and you can see that's gonna calculate in some Gaussian blur into that selection. All right, and then we can do the same thing on the back. Command click on this layer to make it a selection and on this layer, we're gonna use that selection to add to our Gaussian blur. There we go. Looks decent. <laughs> it could look a little bit better. You know what, I don't like this blur on the front. So I'm gonna change my mind. We're going back in time and um, there we go. I think that looks good. Let's just put a regular layer, on, layer mask on that. I tried to get fancy, whatever. <laughs> sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But you can see here, we're looking quite a bit more real um, than we did before. And this is something that everyone's gonna run into when they're doing composites, and uh, this is a good way to fix it. So creating that little area, but adding texture while you do it. All right, guys, that is the end of today's episode, and now it's time to draw our contest for the new episode. I'm super excited. I don't know what it is yet, uh, but we're gonna figure it out right here. So this coming week, we got a bunch of pieces of paper in here. The contest is specific color. We had to cut, because I didn't remember what I wanted to do with this. All right, specific color. What we're gonna be doing, guys, the color red. So every image that you submit has to have red in it. It can be anywhere, it can be the entire image, it can be just a small part of the image, but it has to have the color red in the image you do. So submit your image down below, make sure it has red in it for a chance to win your Florin Pro, and next week we're gonna edit your image. Guys, thanks so much for watching Florin. Be sure to tune in on Wednesday for our coverage of Photo Plus. We'll see you guys soon. Florin, you later. The contest is specific color. Specific color. I don't, I don't remember what I was thinking when I wrote this contest. That was a total choke. I couldn't even remember what this contest was about. <laughs> uh, worst contest announcement ever, but it's gonna be a good contest.